Hi everyone, this is Real World Audio and today it is time for a little adventuring. Today I really wanted to work on my body's amplifier, a Heathkit W6, total rebuild and uh, I'm rebuilding it with the driver and face splitter and input stage of the Ampex theater amplifier and it will be a very very interesting amplifier. I think it's kind of a statement uh, push-pull amplifier and um, but I'm just dead tired today. It's been a totally grueling week, a brutal year at work, each month getting harder than before and even the start of the year was already pretty much soul and flesh and bone grinding. So if you are in a similar shoes, then uh, my heart is out with you. I share what you share. <laughs> and uh, what I can tell you is just hang on and uh, just try to find an outlet that recharges you, that gives you energy and refills you on your day off if you have a day off or maybe just at the end of the day so that you can go on for your next day to wake up, go to work and uh, just give your best no matter what. For me, audio is a really important part in this. It's just uh, unbelievable how much uh, energy it can give you and uh, how, how much wear and tear can be um, undone just by listening to music and uh, and of course if you are in the mood uh, then even if you have a transistor radio or just your phone uh, or and even on mp3 you listen to something uh, you can uh, have a relaxing experience but uh, I just uh, have to share with you that um, that's the theoretical case. But uh, what my experience is that uh, as the technology gets more and more towards digital and we are using MP3 compression, uh, we are using um, Class D uh, and more and more uh, compromises that make the audio more more of a comfort, more of a, um, a just like pleasuring or uh, immediate instant gratification desires. The more technology moves in this direction, the less you get in that respect that it can restore your inner balance so to have a system that restores your inner balance first you have to put in energy and then you just seek out a stereo gear for giving you the most comfort the most leisure then that's what it will give you uh, basically an atrophied lifestyle an atrophied experience if you are just sitting on your couch pushing buttons or maybe just selecting a playlist from your cell phone and you are not using, not engaging your body, you are not engaging your mind, you don't do anything, you just uh, uh, swipe your credit card and then you push buttons, then uh, what I notice that the experience you get, uh, it can be uh, truly uh, pleasurable, it can... Uh, engage you and it can entertain you and provide amazing show but it uh, largely it does nothing to this uh, to restore your inner balance and uh, in most cases it will just drain you more so when you go home and return after a day of hard work and you turn on your stereo then it will make you even more tired after you are done with the listening. And, uh, and to me, uh, music and stereo is a way to 
recharge myself and uh, it can be done uh, it's very easy actually to put a system like that together that will help you heal and recover but you need some knowledge for that and you need some information and and some pointers on the path on how to uh, what sort of technologies to pursue that can give you this experience so with that starter now today we are going again do some adventuring on in arthur salvatore's mind in the high-end audio website and uh, i've been talking to my friends about him and uh, <laughs> craig uh, we have shared uh, some thoughts about uh, uh, arthur salvatore and uh, and indeed uh, he is a very unique guy in audio and uh, and people have problem placing him uh, is is he truly a visionary a genius or is he a quack or or what's going on so when you look online and check what people think about him there will be uh, like really negative thoughts about him without any mentioning of anything concrete and factual just what the person thinks based on uh, uh, his whatever uh, without seeing him hearing him or just reading uh, some of his writings and then just making up their minds without experiencing what he's talking about but then when you read those people's reports who have been in his store while he was still active they usually tell that uh, they have heard the best sound in their life they ever heard and since then they haven't heard as good sound as they heard in Arthur Salvatore's uh, uh, stereo shop and then by the time he wrote these writings he has retired so he was not an audio salesman anymore and uh, he speaks out a lot of his mind about uh, about the audio industry, about reviewers, uh, just give you a few insider tips on what's going on behind the scenes, what you can expect. And uh, what I can share with you is that uh, I largely agree with his uh, observations from what I have seen on the inside of the audio world. His observations are a uh, point on. Uh, but uh, when you look at those uh, reviews and reviewers uh, that he's talking about, I am not as pessimistic as he is. Um, but that's a topic for another video. I think uh, now we have taken enough time. Uh, now I'm already at 8 minutes and I still haven't said a word about today's subject. So without further ado, uh, let's go into this writing of Salvatore, which is about, he titled it, The Evolution of Sonic Priorities. And actually it's, uh, it's the progression of an audiophile as he sees it. And uh, I want to share... Uh, my comments and my experiences on, on what I think how the path of an audiophile is. So he's saying that the first step is if you want to go above pure junk level, then uh, people usually go for more bass and more power. And, uh, and usually people, when they get that, they do not grow any further. They... they just stay there and they are really happy with that and uh, that, that's fine and that's what I noticed too that there is a lot of people who, who just want more bass like better bass or stronger bass or deeper bass and, uh, and want the, uh, that stereo gear to sound not like a, uh, like a mutating teenager but like a a basso singer, uh, just for an example, and uh, and then that's it. And I I do agree with that. There's a lot of people for whom that's the first step, but there's also a lot of people who really do not have that desire to have uh, overwhelming bass or just a really strong bass. I think this is really 
depending on the personality of that person. If you are someone who who really wants to step up in in uh, in the corporate ladder, or you want to become like a CEO, or or like have like a higher level function, or a title. Let's say you want to be called a doctor or something like that, and and you have a motivation to achieve uh, recognition in the eyes of other people. This this type of personality usually is attracted to more base and more power, which is kind of a, a an, another aspect of uh, getting more recognition. And and when they get that, they they are happy with that. And uh, however, if you you are not this sort of personality, you are more of an introvert. You do not want to grow outside. Your priority is to grow inside, which means like uh, discovering your mind, discovering uh, spirituality, or you are more of an intellectual person, then you will uh, most likely go for what uh, Salvatore calls the second step, is a taste for superior mid-range and high frequencies. Uh, so some a lot of people just go for that. They they want better mid range, which means that uh, uh, that part of the the voice of the spectrum, which includes the human voice. So you want clarity from your system, and uh, and I think that's what a lot of us want from your from our systems even when you have the base and power you want it to be more than just a wall of sound because what he calls as pure junk uh, i think we could also define it as just a wall of sound so that you do not have uh, voices you do not have instruments you do not even have frequency ranges you just have a, a noise basically everything comes at you at once and uh, it it gives you a background experience like some like a PA system just going on in the background like when you go to uh, to somewhere like a, a bank or something and there's a TV in the background and and it's just just pews forth constant noise so that's that's the pure junk level and you want more than that uh, and uh, for Salvatore, that for him, that's the step after you have base and power, then stepping up for better mid-range and high frequencies. That's the next level. And uh, yes, I have uh, seen this happen. A lot of people who are not satisfied just stopping here, then the next level is getting better mid-range and high frequencies. And, and I have to warn everyone that when you read reviews online about new gear uh, coming out, especially in the cheaper price range, and when the reviewers just rave about them that, oh, this is amazing, so much more bass, so much more power, this is the level they are talking about. Level one is that that equipment uh, has aced that uh, step, the first step, that getting more power, more base, but uh, I would say 99% of what reviewers rave about is not yet at uh, step two. Uh, there is uh, quite a bit of uh, compromise in mid-range and, and with the high frequencies. And this is what I see uh, as the development of audio products during the past couple of decades is that the emphasis is moving from step two to step one. So we are as a whole, as mankind or as uh, people in Western Europe who are influencing uh, the uh, present and future of audio, we are getting more and more focused on bass, on, on low frequency energy and making it more powerful and louder. And uh, there is less and less refinement in the mid-range and high frequencies. But I would say that uh, uh, the gear today would still, for most of us, will still pass as having better high frequencies and uh, better mid-ranges. Uh, 
as many vintage gear and that's simply for the fact that the mid-range and highs are getting leaner so it's it's more hollowed out has no substance to it but there's more superficial information uh, at these uh, frequencies and uh, and and when you are at the beginning of your road so your loudspeakers are not resolving enough your cabling is uh, doesn't allow uh, high frequency information to come through your connectors are not at that level yet then you will think that we are progressing in the high frequency department and uh, i'm saying that we are progressing towards a more photoshopped sound so it's getting more and more uh, edited and 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 that editing gives us that fake impression that we are getting more we are actually getting less but it's uh, more uh, shaped to uh, a certain um, format that is new that is different and when uh, when you look at audio products and compare them through the decades then you see a change in in the sound and there is uh, every decade has its uh, characteristic uh, sound signature that people think it's chic that it's new that it's better than the one that used to be uh, 10 years or 20 or 30 years ago but and today we think of it that oh this is the superior mid-range or this is the superior high frequencies but you will see 10 years from now people will really this uh, what we what was called today as uh, as superior high frequency and they will say that this was really uh, not uh, not it, it's it won't be even considered high fidelity anymore as uh, as taste change and now let's see where was I uh, do, 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 do. however here comes the the most most expensive and complex components are those enhancements if you want to uh, evolve beyond this point and I do agree with that so when you are at these two levels it is possible to get a very cheap system or a kind of cheap system and uh, and you can have it either one one or the other uh, level I would say like either good mid-range and highs or having a great, I mean, not great, but a powerful bass. And if you want both of them, then that's already uh, quite a bit of jump in both the skills required to put together a system like that. So if you want that, then you will never get that just by randomly going through gear then you need someone to guide you to that stage. If you don't have that person, you will be randomly uh, jumping between better mid-range, better highs or better bass, but, but you won't get both of them at the same time. And uh, if you, you have all of those, then that should be called high fidelity. Uh, I do agree with him. Uh, if it's high fidelity, it really means that it, it's really... I would say lifelike or presents sound naturally to me that's high fidelity but uh, uh, that would really exclude about 95% of all stereo gear even which are called as high end today uh, three next step it is much more difficult uh, but we are going near 20 minutes so I will stop now and let's continue at the next video thank you for tuning in we shall continue. Bye-bye.